chapter two of Sean Hannity's uh, G gaggle OP. We continue tonight reporting from Washington, D.C., the swamp, as I've been saying. How <laughs> With a bunch of people who are old because they've been working in Washington for a long fucking time. Again, you don't get any points for calling it the swamp anymore, you hack son of a bitch. I am tired of it. Does anybody go to an accounting firm and run an efficiency um, audit on it if you can? And, and tell me that it's any different and you couldn't call it a swamp because people like, people have cups on their desks and so this lady has a plant and there's a hang in their cat fucking poster and it's distracting people from the job they should be doing. Half the clients are, are off book LLCs and I don't know. It's so fucking lazy. House Republicans now unified behind, behind uh, their section of the swamp, which they have been digging all weekend to make deeper. They're hoping to turn the swamp into a lake. It's a new approach. And an agenda to hold the Biden administration accountable on everything from the border to the origins of COVID, the FBI, are they politicized? Is the DOJ weaponized? And we continue now with the new Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, along with House Majority Leader Steve Scalise joins us and House Republican Conference Chair Elise Stefanik. Good to Did did she get one of her eyes lowered since the last time? Or have I been looking at her in a mirror forever? Is this like, this is what happens when there's a picture swap. Is that, is it just me? To see all, uh, you, all you guys all happy with your leadership now? <laughs> please clap. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Hannity's please clap moment. Please, please tell me that one of them has a beach ball in their nose. If not, I was thinking we could always hold another vote or two. Uh <laughs> you. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, I think I've had enough. You had enough. <laughs> oh, we don't need to do that again. Motion to vacate. Motherfucker. Um, I, we've known each other for a long time, Steve. Too long. And... This is, to me, a pivotal moment for the country. Mm. I know, I, for example, I do three hours of radio every day, and I hear from my own... Yes. And uh, you manage to say nothing. It's amazing. Even, even Glenn Beck is in awe. ...audience every day, and they are <clears throat> genuinely frightened about the economy, about energy, about open borders. That's because your entire job, Sean Hannity, is to scare the fuck out of your listeners. That's the gig. But Russell Brand says the same shit. Hashtag okay, Doomer. All the things that is on that paper that Kevin has, how, how realistic is The commitment to America, it's kind of like the contract with America, but it's at, you know, to instead of with. Uh, is it that we can get all of this done? Well, Sean, I think it's so important that the American people finally said enough is enough. And look, there is... Enough is enough is enough. All right. A lot of despair out there. Families mm. are struggling. And the real problem was they did not see Washington working for them. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, what Scalise means is that a lot of Republican families are struggling with reality. A lot of them have QAnon members. And they're, uh, those are the discussions they're having at the dinner table. Because Washington was working against them. The problem. No, it was not. Washington did not pass an infrastructure bill for the first time in 26 fucking years so that they could attack the American people. The fuck are you talking about? Problems families are facing from higher costs, inflation, high energy costs, open border, all created by President Biden. No. And again, I understand you want to dunk on the other party. That makes sense. However, if you solve for the wrong problem, you will come to the wrong solution. The extreme agenda of Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. And so people said, okay, we've got one opportunity to at least put some checks and balances and send. No, they didn't. Oh, oh, no, they didn't. Two years ago, they could have put Trump back in charge and they said, fuck that. And then th they lost the Senate at the same time. And then they decided to give more of the Senate to Democrats. They, again, 
The only thing that made the difference in the House was gerrymandering. And you can't gerrymander the Senate. Because it's already gerrymandered because red states already get two fucking senators, even if they've got less people than Santa Monica, Cal people California. People willing to fight for the families that are left behind. And that was really at the heart of the rules package. Because before we can go start fighting for those families, we had to change the way Washington worked. And that's really why the Democrats were so concerned about these rules changes, because they realized the party's over. The idea that you can write four or 5,000 page bills by dark of night, the old Pelosi way of you got to pass the bill to find out what's in it. Those yeah, that, that was never true. And it's always been garbage. It's silly. Those days are over. So that's 72. And the reason why she said that, by the way, is because these fuckos, um, especially when they were writing stuff, when Trump was in office, they were fucking cribbing shit into it all the way up to the moment that, of the vote. Our rule is rock solid. 72 hour rule, single subject. No, not true. They, they, they've already busted. They voted on a bunch of shit that they didn't set up for 72 hours. You out of your fucking mind? It hasn't been 72 hours since they passed the fucking rules and they've already passed some things. What are you talking about? Check bills, Sean, allowing members, all members, not just in leadership, but rank and file members to be engaged in the process of going to bat for those families who are struggling. And add amendments during the appropriation yeah. process. Yeah, that hasn't happened. You know, you know what's the difference now? This is probably more people in the public that's ever been in the Capitol in the last two years. We've now... Um... There was one day where there were a lot of people from the public that were in the Capitol. I'm, I'm trying to remember what the exact date was, um, but there's thousands of them. They were everywhere. By God, they, some of them, it was, it was, there weren't enough doors. They had to come in through the windows. Open the doors. I want to invite. And the windows. Invite everyone who's listening. If you've ever dreamed of coming to D.C., come to you, you know the place we've told you to hate and shit on? Come here. Armed. To D.C. And you know what? You can sit in the gallery and you can watch us debate. You can see your government at work because this is your... And by the way, I, I sat in the gallery and watched debates on the floor. Summer and I were in D.C. twice in the last couple of years. And... and <laughs> We sat in the gallery and watched the debates. Your house, this is your government, and we have- This is your swamp. It's the people's swamp. Bring your, bring your waiters and come to the people's swamp. Just now empowered you even greater than ever before. So that brings accountability. By the way, no you haven't. You, you can watch. You can't fucking pipe up and boo. You'll get thrown out. The fuck are you talking about? By the way, the C-SPAN cameras are always on. Who gives a rat fuck if you're sitting there in person? Just to start out with. And we want you to join with us. No matter what party you're in. But if you believe in securing your border, if you believe that you want to be able to fill up your tank. Yeah. Basically, he's trying to get maggots to come down and flood the entire gallery so they can boo Democrats during the debates and cheer Republicans. That's what this is for. And then, and since he... He's in charge of, like, house order. I, I, there's nothing in there that I, I'm going to guess that they're not going to really, if they're not doing the 72-hour rule, the sure is not going to, uh, you know, satisfy the rule of everybody shut your fucking trap during debates. But have money left over for food. Do you want to be energy independent? Did you see the story, story out of your state of California? Oh the notice God. they sent out? Yeah. To expect your energy bill to double from where you know it was why? last year. Because what Gavin Newsom has done to California, he has shrunk our grid. And then he tells you you can only buy an electric car, then you can't charge it. It is. And by the way, no, he hasn't. You can buy gas cars, IC cars in California. And if they reach a certain point and the technology is not there where enough people can buy, you know, there, there aren't enough cheap like electric cars and the like that you could sell in California at different price points, they'll push the date. That's how California works. It's how they've worked with everything. It's how they improved most of the environment there. It's the emission standards that California had that it bettered the entire fucking country were punted a few times, but the existence of them moved everybody down the field more than not having them at all. Well, you mismanagement. can only charge it between certain hours. Uh, I've got to yeah, correct the but record. But you'll pay 40% higher. Yeah. There's a reason why for the first time in the history of California, we're decreasing, that people are leaving. It's the Democrat. 
Uh, one second. By the way, um, if I may, um, uh, California notice energy costs. So we'll see what they are. Um, news. Your master is Whoops, hold on. Whoops. There we go. Back up. Where'd it go? Oh, it went the other way. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Friday uh, down. Um, this is LA Times. Friday. Um, when's this? January 6, 2023. Here you go. Whoops. The view from Sacramento. I don't care. One second. Okay, here we go. Get ready for massive SoCal bill this month as natural gas prices soar. Uh, the warning um, Southern California Gas Company issued to its customers was unusually blunt. There's no easy way to put this. The company said January bills are likely to be shockingly high. Anybody who heats their home with natural gas is likely to see a January bill that is more than double what they paid a year earlier. SoCal gas said. Uh, a typical peak monthly bill of $65 from last winter will probably come in at close to $160 a 146% increase. A $130 bill will be up 315, up 142%. The increase results from the soaring wholesale price of natural gas paid by SoCal Gas and passed through its customers. That price, set by national and regional markets, uh, rose two and a half times over December's price, and it's up more than 300% from January of 2022. Uh, Tom Cox of Westchester hasn't yet received his January. Okay, this is people. Our bill is not high compared to what I've heard. Uh, it's not yet just your gas bill. Your electric bill is going up to, uh, it said the rates will go up 7.2% for electricity in January, mainly because of the rising price of natural gas. Natural gas is the source of about 22% of the company's electricity. So when the gas prices go up, electric, uh, electricity prices go up too. Natural gas used in South, Southern California usually goes up during the winter months as homes and businesses use gas for heating. January usually is the peak month. Gas prices are jumping across the state in the territory served by San Diego gas and electric, a household that paid 105 in January will pay 225 this month. The bill estimated that's an increase of 114%. Um, utility customers uh, said his organization started receiving complaints about the higher gas bills before the holidays. If, if in fact, SD and uh, G and E customers said that type of hike, um, see that type of hike, that is just so unreasonable and so painful. It's creating tough, tough choices for SD G and E customers in terms of not only how they pay their bill, but making choices at, to exactly what bills, including bills for other essential items that they can afford to pay. Um, other than attribute to uh, usually uh, unusually cold winter weather in California and the Pacific Northwest, which boosted demand for heat as well as supply and distribution constraints. Which again, um, if I may, um, interesting change of events. Why this might be? <clears throat> again, statewide. Perhaps. Perhaps. <clears throat> well, it's, a, I mean, it's, it's a different take on it, but uh, we'll, we'll put it in here. Here you go. Uh, near record snowfall in California mountains might reverse state's historic drought. Europe isn't the only place that's experiencing unusual weather. Uh, California snowfall in the mountains this year is nearly double the seasonal average, giving the drought-stricken state hopes for a moist 2023. Um, last Tuesday, the state performed, uh, its first formal snow survey up in the Sierra Nevadas. Currently, it's 174% of the historical average for that time of year. That's the third largest snowpack in the, in the past 40 years, trailing only, uh, 83 in 2011. California has three years of drought and many reservoirs and lakes are showing it. Heavy storms, which dumped all the snow on the mountains are deposited, uh, also deposited floodwaters around the north of the state which the LA Times reported is actually normal. Officials say that while the storm damage is, of course, unfortunate, se uh, severe, uh, sorry, several more forms, uh, storms will be needed to refill the reservoirs. It could be a drought buster of a year if things continue on a wet track. Um, snowfall is up 174% in the state. So heating costs, mm-hmm. Democratic policies. And, and also it, you know, the, the, the gas that they're burning or they've spent or bought were in gas futures from months ago when the price was higher. That they have tried to put here in Washington, and fortunately, when the American public spoke here to Congress, you now have a voice. You have a check and balance. By the way, uh, he, he, he didn't lose his job. And we will stand up, and that's our commitment. You know, uh, Congresswoman, I know you, I've known you a long time. Um, I know you a long time. One of the things I'd like to see, and I'm seeing, is, is stuff that I can make clips out of 
and exaggerate into end of the world scenarios, but that turn out to be nothing so it doesn't affect my investments. There's more diversity in the Republican Party. To me, the Democrat uh -huh. Democratic Party. Well, I mean, you got, don't you have a lockdown with Santos? A Brazilian gay Catholic Jew that's both educated and uneducated, rich and poor. I mean, come on. The man is a walking demographic time bomb. He is the party of coastal elites. They don't, I... <laughs> Kevin McCarthy's from California. They're not representing the men and women that make this country run and work every day to me. Sorry, the coastal, you are one of the coastal elites, you dumb fuck. You, you, Sean Hannity is rich and lives in Manhattan. He's got like a house in fucking Connecticut or wherever they like, wherever those rich assholes helicopter in from. And I see the America First agenda, why I like it so much. Is because it's easy to manipulate sponge-headed fuckos that I would never hang out with. Is it really appeals to mm. all the people in this country that get up every mm. day, work hard, play by the rules, pay their taxes, obey the laws, and raise their kids and don't want their values contradicted by some teacher with an agenda. And all of that is now... Sketty, you notice as he keeps talking, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. ...paper written down. How confident are you that all of this will get accomplished? Well, I'm so confident. Take a look around at these wonderful members. This is the most diverse class of Republicans ever elected in the history of the United States Congress. Uh-huh. She, she really went there. We have more women than were ever elected before, more Hispanic members ever elected before, more African-American members in modern history. This shows that our... <laughs> in modern history, meaning they used to have more black members back when it was the party of Lincoln. <laughs> our party is growing, and I will tell... And by the way, just having m more than you ever have when you've had almost none is not fucking impressive. The fuck is wrong with you? The America First agenda is a growing big tent agenda. It is. It's so big tent. It's amazing. You can fit a, 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 a gay Brazilian Jew Catholic who was married to a woman and who's rich and poor in there. We've never done better than we do today among his Hispanic voters. And President Trump and House Republicans were a huge part of doing that. And what's most important is the American... You're, you're, by the way... The only thing I like about this is the fact that she's making Tucker Carlson cry right now. People are going to judge us by the results we've delivered. Look at this past week. We're already keeping our promises. On day one, we repealed the 87,000 IRS agents. He already said that. And no, you didn't. You didn't. You did not. You did not. You passed something that says you're going to, or you said that, did, but you didn't do it. Didn't actually do it. I, you swinging at the baseball is not a home run. I don't know what the fuck. Agents, we just set up. By the way, most of them had a target on my back. But go ahead. <laughs> well, those those agents were targeting. Well, I, I mean, that's because they've spoken to Michael Cohen, client number three. Hardworking Americans, working that's class Americans. That was Americans. a report today. Absolutely, yeah. hardworking Americans like I represent in upstate New York. Yes. Yeah. Upstate coastal elites, ladies and gentlemen. Coastal. Fucking elites. I swear to God, like, it's, uh, Steve Scalise must feel like he's holding up the entire Midwest by himself. Uh, so we are making good. She's in upstate New York where, you know, Hannity has a summer home and McCarthy's from California. On our agenda, and we are going to go through that commitment to America to mm. show the American people what House Republicans can accomplish and the results that we deliver. Let me ask well, yeah, I mean, it will be weighed against what you said and the, the disappointments will be felt very strongly. It's going to be fun to watch. Ask everyone in the room. We have a room full of congressmen and women. Is everybody on the same page with the commitments to America? Everybody? You can't do that. They were just bragging last week that there were, that Democrats vote like automatons and that they're, they like diversity in the... I'm fucking with you. Is there anybody... Don't Is do it. Anybody, and you can be honest, anybody that has disagreements with it. Nobody. Okay. Somebody held up a fucking piece of paper behind you, and then you blew him off. Where the, the, the watch this guy. Watch. Is there anybody? 
is there anybody, and you can be honest, anybody that has disagreements with it? Nobody. Yeah. So that's scientific. And we all know that uh, these guys love to discuss backroom stuff in front of cameras. Okay. What about the okay. investigations? Are you on board for all of these investigations? Hey, sure. Like, do, do we all learn something? Do we all grow? I feel we grew. I feel I learned a lot about myself and I explored parts of myself that I was, uh, I was afraid might be there. And then when I found them, I was like, no, it's good. Say it's, it tickles a little, but I'm enjoying myself. Um, none of that, again, once you, you, we've all been voters for some time. I think most of the people watching, um, we've been through a couple of these cycles and whenever the, the pseudo revolutionaries get in power, the first thing they say is the same shit that everybody else says with their own buzzwords in there. <clears throat> I was like spending a day at the DMV. Exactly. 